Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and we're live at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. This is theCUBE. We're at Oracle Open World. Uh, this is our third year here, and this is the Oracle Backup and Recovery Spotlight. And we're going to drill into uh, some of the trends that are going on in the industry. Uh, we just set up uh, the overall sort of market angle and the technical angle, some of the things that Oracle practitioners should, should think about. And to have this next conversation, I'm here with Shane Jackson and Mel Schum of EM, EMC's BRS division. Shane is the, the vice president of the division, uh, and, and Mel is a, a database expert. Mel has uh, been on the queue before. We had him on last year at Oracle Open World, and we can drill into some of the technical aspects. So gentlemen, welcome. Thank you, Dave, Thanks, good to Dave. be here. So good to see you guys again. Uh, you know, we're here at Oracle Open World. It's amazing just to see the transformation of, of Oracle. I know, Shane, you live out in the valley and you've yeah. seen Oracle, you, you knew Sun Microsystems well. I don't know, mm -hmm. Mel, if you're out here as well, but yes, yes, to, to predict that Oracle would be here as a, a, you know, a hardware company, talking about all this cool hardware, you know, mm -hmm. really a software company doing that, I never could have predicted that, but it's a quite amazing transformation, isn't it? They've definitely transformed in that way. <laughs> yeah, so at the same time, it's become a, a different animal to compete with. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we were at VMworld last month. It's all about the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. and there's a big ecosystem here, but there's a, there's a different vibe. But um, so let's talk about backup specifically. It's a critical topic for uh, Oracle DBAs. It's a complicated one. Um, and if you mess up your backup in Oracle, you're in deep trouble because you're mm -hmm. running your business on it. So, Shane, I wonder if you could start just, just by talking about some of the trends that you're seeing in your business and how things have evolved over the last couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's an interesting point you make about uh, Oracle and the competitive nature, but uh, they're a very close partner in the way, in the sense that our top use case for our backup and recovery solutions is for databases. And it points right back to the criticality that you just talked about, where if you mess up the backup of that, it makes an impact on your business, right? Not just your ability to get a backup done or recovery done from the previous night, but it actually has a downstream effect on the ability for people to do work and for the company to make revenue. And so that's really where we've been focused in EMC's backup and recovery systems division is on uh, things around recoverability, right? And it's the thing that's the old adage of about backup. It's not about backup, it's about the recovery. So obviously recoverability is important. Um, doing that efficiently, so you need to bring some efficiencies into the mix in order to advance the cost and reduce the cost that it takes to get this done. Uh, when you it, contrast that against the, how quickly data is growing, uh, it's like a tractor pull. That's you know the, the further you go down the track, the more the data weighs down on you, the harder it is to get the job done around backup. So efficiency has to be in the next. And the third part of it is agility. So it's not good enough to just have a backup plan for what you need to do today. What's going to happen next, and the step after that, and the step after that. So you have to come to come to the table with those three things, and and that's where we've really been putting our focus in terms of the EMC's backup and recovery systems division. Um, to do that, we really look on a couple of dimensions, which you know, Mel will get into as we go through the conversation around database backups in terms of performance. So you have to bring the performance to, to, the, to the table that's needed. Uh, you need to have simplicity, right? If the, one of the key trends that we're seeing is that not only is it about the backup team wanting to uh, understand and know what's going on with backup data, but the application owner themselves needs to know. The database administrator wants to understand, you know, it's my job on the line if, I, if my database doesn't work, if I can't get that data back, I want to have control and know where that backup is. So for him to be able to do that simply is important. Um, and then the final thing is to be uh, predictable. So you want predictable processes around your backup and recovery. So if you have those three things as, as a DBA, uh, you start to feel pretty comfortable with your backup solution. So Mel, last month at uh, VMworld we, we were talking about, we talk about backup and recovery everywhere we go because it's an important topic, but the, yeah. the discourse is really around virtualization and, and the resource allocation and the, the physical resources that you have available and techniques to sort of architect around that. What's different in the Oracle world about backup? What makes it unique and challenging? So uh, yeah, that's actually an interesting uh, topic because it's very unlike just plain old files, because if you have 99% of the files for a restore of the database, you actually have a zero successful restore. You're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, and I've heard this actually in a customer environment where literally the backup industry says, yes, we are 99% successful because we have 99 files out of 100. The DBA turned to the, the backup industry and says, you've got 0% success rate because I need all the files to do a restore. And that's the critical 
criticality of is being able to understand what files are relevant and what files are not relevant. I've seen a lot of customers uh, wanting to tune the performance, not necessarily in terms of the throughput, but reducing the number of people required to do a restore. I don't have to have my DBA, storage administrator, SAN administrator, server administrator, backup administrator, all coming together to figure out where is the backup and how do we get it back to where it's supposed to be and all the pieces are there. I've seen a lot of companies say, let's streamline this thing, make it almost self-service where the DBA is the only one woken up at 2 a.m. at Sunday. The DBA knows exactly where it is, kicks off the restore, and then it, off it goes. Because no matter how fast it is, if you're getting five different people in five different areas to speak the same language to try to do a restore as quickly as possible, it's, it's restoring by committee. And that's where a lot of people realize restoring by committee just does not work. No matter how fast your networks are, you can't get the com committee to agree to exactly where everything is at that time. And the DBA, because, like Shane said, they are vested in making sure that the, the database backup is correct. They're the ones that actually get to do it, enabling the DBAs to, to back up the database properly so that they know how to restore it properly. And those are the things that I've seen coming through as, as a trend where we're trying to streamline the process, not necessarily through the throughput, because you can only tune that to, to a certain point, but streamline the literally project and doing it down to one person so there's no critical path or no, no mis, mishandling of, of handing off things. Having it all down to just one person, just do the restore as quickly as possible. It reminds me of that old bromide, you know, it's with people, process, and technology, and oftentimes people say technology is the easiest part. If you ever doubt that, <laughs> that statement, go look at backup in Oracle worlds. It's really about the, the people and, and the process, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. If you can get the process down to just one guy who knows exactly what he's doing, or gal, they can actually get it done a lot faster and more efficiently. Now having said that, technology has evolved, and um, we've seen you know, the, the days of tape and then VTL, and obviously you know, today we're in this world of purpose-built backup appliances. Uh, I, we've looked you know, heavily, we often cite in the IDC report. Sure. Uh, it's been amazing to see EMC's progress there. For those of you who don't know, EMC actually acquired Data Domain and has the assets of Data Domain, a previous acquisition of Avamar, and a previous acquisition of Legato, which has turned into networker software, and the combination of those has led to a really dominant market position. You can't find a lot of markets where um, a company has as much share, maybe networking, Cisco and networking, Mm -hmm. uh, but you've got about a two-thirds of that marketplace uh, in the purpose-built backup appliance. Um, how were you able to achieve that? How important is Oracle you know, markets to that you know, <coughs> dominance, and can you maintain it? I think the way we achieved that is that EMC, at the time of the data domain acquisition, made a strategic decision to break out a business unit focused wholly on backup and recovery. So that division has grown over time. We're uh, over three years in now and we've got over 4,000 people uh, in that division that wake up every day thinking about only backup and recovery. So if you look across other industry players, you're probably hard pressed to find anybody else that's that, that mass uh, stacked up against this problem, which as you look at the different data from IDC and, and you guys have talked about it, uh, backup is showing up more and more as a top priority for even the executive IT members of companies. You know, back when I got into backup, it was about, I was in the tape business, and you bought your servers, you bought your storage, and whatever money left over, you bought some tape drives and some robotics, right? It's completely changed because they're now seeing that the backup process can stall things like virtualization. It can stall what you're doing uh, and your business objectives around Oracle and databases and whatnot. So it's much more at the forefront on how companies are looking at where they're going to make their investments. So the combination of having the focus within EMC uh, on backup and recovery and the industry changes such that uh, a, the old method of just having backup software pointed to a tape drive is, is far from adequate, as has been well proven. How has, um, how have you changed, because Shane, you came from, uh, through the acquisition of Data Domain, mm -hmm. and you guys did a great job of really focusing on cutting costs, the, the, the dedupe rates that you were going to achieve, predicting those dedupe rates, and really re essentially replacing tape as the primary backup medium. Mm -hmm. How has your um, messaging and conversations with customers changed? Um, over the last couple of years. Yeah, in interesting question. We were actually just joking as we were preparing for the show, uh, one of our sessions uh, where we're talking a lot about data demand and Oracle backup. Some of the slides in that deck were around in 2004 um, because those, the, some of the key value propositions we bring like 
data and vulnerability architecture, which is the way we cycle through the data on a data domain system to make sure that it's always recoverable, that nothing has happened during the course of the retention period. Uh, our stream-informed segment layout technology, which makes us very fast in the way that we interoperate with the disk, which gives us our performance advantages. Those are key advantages that, that we've had throughout and that still remain un, unmatched. What, what has changed over time is the interaction with the users of the, the ultimate users of the backup. So if you go back to data domain days, it was purely about the partner ecosystem. So how do we work with Symantec and the, the rest of the uh, backup partners? And now the focus has shifted much more to the application owners. So what is the Oracle DBA? How do they do their backup? What does that mean in interfacing with EMC backup and recovery products through something like Oracle RMAN? How does the VMware administrator interact with our products, the storage administrator, and right on down the line? So if you look at where we're going with our products, it's less about just the backup administrator's use of the technology, but the whole application user's interaction with it and their ability to see and understand what's going on in the environment. Now, um, your CTO of your division, Stephen Manley, has been on theCUBE, and mm -hmm. he, at EMC World this year, laid out this new vision mm -hmm. of sort of you know, essentially taking space efficient snapshots uh, locally uh, and then you know, asynchronously moving the data offsite for disaster recovery. Um, a, a new way of thinking about the backup, we, we called it the time machine for the enterprise, the Apple time machine mm -hmm. sort of idea. You know, being able to dial up or dial down your, your, uh, your, your RPO and, and different approach. Mm -hmm. um, so, Shane, I want you if you could sort of talk about that vision, just mm -hmm. briefly, you know, where you're at, you know, what your thoughts are there, and, and then Mel, I want to ask you how it plays in the Oracle environment. Okay. Yes, so, so briefly, it maps basically right back into what I just said, and the, the <coughs> ultimate goal is to have a consolidated uh, layer of protection storage. So in, what happens when you have the different application owners starting to care about how they do backup, they start creating silos of storage where they're directing those backups, and all of a sudden, from the top of the organization looking down, you don't have visibility into where are the backups, am I in compliance, you know, the things that a CIO would worry about. So the goal of what Man Stephen Manley was talking about is getting to that uh, protection storage where all of those different interfaces write to that cons single consolidated backend. Once you have that and the capabilities for those application owners and their applications to be aware of that storage, then you can start to do the things like the snapshotting technology uh, that Stephen was referring to in his, in his keynote. But so Mel, what's your prognosis for how that's going to play in the Oracle environment? And sure. where does it fit? So, so from uh, uh, Oracle DBA's point of view, uh, what we do is provide a facility for self-service. You're being able to do your own backups and own recoveries without any intervention but there still needs to be an element of a backup administrator there to monitor to make sure things don't fill up, things, jobs actually run well. So there's ability for them to oversee all the DBAs, uh, VMware administrators, and all the other ones to make sure jobs are done successfully. There's another piece also where DBAs care more about the backups until it's too old that they don't care about it. So it's a point where it's an, an archive point of view. So the backup administrator will still need to make sure that they manage the archive and maybe send, save it off to another location or another, another place. But once the, D, the DBAs are pretty much through with the backup, it's, let's say it's 30 days, 60 days, 90 days old, they don't really care too much about the backup at that point. The, back, the backup administrator still needs to care about that. So we, we allow the decentralization of backup and restoring for the DBAs, but not necessarily worry about, is my data domain filling up? Did all my backup jobs you know, uh, run? Uh, successfully for uh, compliance reasons, you know, to make sure that everything is done correctly. So that that job is more facilitated for the backup administrator, but we're, we're facilitating that by making uh, products that changes the, the dynamics in, in the customer environment that way. Do you guys still see a lot of tape in Oracle environments, and does that surprise you? Occasionally, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and it's, it's, it's funny because there's some uh, countries actually, where the law says you have to use tape for compliance, and it, it literally spells out tape, and the customer, customers will follow to the letter saying, "I will use tape, no matter even if it's virtual tape. They want to use physical tape just because the letter of the law says that you use, use tape." And it's, it's it's surprising to me. And it's fair to say that that increasingly that's a that's in a, an archive or, or or compliance role. Exactly. Um, now you've sort of taken some action in that archive market. You've got some solutions there. Uh, you've essentially, in my mind, effectively creamed 
tape as a primary backup medium. <laughs> Do you think that you'll see the, the day where disk, you know, in our lifetime, where disk is the primary archive medium? I, I think so. Um, you know, if, if you look at the rest of our lives outside of this show, yeah. does, does tape exist anywhere? <laughs> um, the only place I have tape is, you know, in my fire safe where I've got my kids' tapes from 12 years ago. And I'm duct scared, tape. Scared to have duct tape. That's another one. I used some of that last weekend. But no, it, we're building the, yeah. the, you know, we're doing a lot of work with Data Domain, for example, which originally was optimized for fast streams of data like you would find in a, in a backup, not necessarily the shorter segments that you would find in an archive kind of workload, but over time that's shifting so that we can do those, those workloads as well because if you, if you can do, get your data where you need it to be, get it replicated offsite for protection, you know, you've, you've taken care of all of the, the needs of either the archive or the backup. Not much room for tape left in that equation. So now that the cloud has moved beyond the hype cycle, you've seen Oracle dive right in. And, uh, and essentially you know, put forth its, its version of, of cloud, which the messaging is pretty tight and fairly compelling. I would think that the number of customers are going to hop on it. Um, we still haven't seen the uptake in cloud for backup, but maybe we can expect to see that more if Oracle's going to push it. So Mel, what are you seeing in terms of cloud as a backup target? And then I'll ask you guys what you expect going forward. Yeah, I, I see uh, three, three plays here. One is, more like a remote backup where customers want to keep their production in-house or want to outsource the backup, so there's remote backups. There's also where uh, they outsource the, the servers as well as the backup, so that would be more of a local backup. Also replication services. Hey, I've got my backups here, but I don't have um, any uh, facilities to, to replicate it to another location. So I've seen three different plays in terms of how backups would play into the, this, this market. and. Um, with EMC, we, we do have uh, services that, that, or products that can facil facilitate those three types of services, whether it's local, remote, or replication backups in that environment. Do you see that, Shane, as something that's going to you know, increase, or is it just the, re the recovery issues are still too problematic to, to make that widespread? Oh no, it's already started. Of the three use cases that Mel just referred to, it's that the customers that have the local backup, mm -hmm. um, say a data domain or an Avamar system, uh, maybe they don't have a, another facility that they can replicate to, so they look to a service provider uh, to provide that disaster recovery capability. So that, that's already well on its way. Excellent. All right, gentlemen, well thanks very much for, for coming on theCUBE and sharing your experiences to what you're hearing in the Oracle customer base, specifically and generally in the market. So uh, good luck and uh, enjoy the rest of the event. Thanks for having us. All right, thanks, keep Dave. it right there. We'll be right back with another segment on the Oracle Backup and Recovery Spotlight here at Oracle Open World, live from the Moscone Center in San Francisco. Keep it right there.